Get ready for Tennessee's next game on the hardwood with our Vols matchup breakdown. We preview the Vols opponent and give you Tennessee's keys to victory here on Vol Basketball Fever. Hello everyone and welcome in to another Vol Basketball matchup breakdown video. I am Nathaniel Rutherford here with Vol Basketball Fever. Thank you all so much for tuning in to see the breakdown of Tennessee's big game this Saturday against number 23 Arkansas in Fayetteville and Bud Walton Arena. Before we get to all the details, and again, thank you all so much for tuning in to here. Please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel while you're here as well. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts on this game and your predictions for this game. So please leave a comment down below at any point in this video with your score prediction, with your analysis of the game whether you disagree or agree with anything I say here on this video. Also, please be sure to subscribe to our podcast, Vol Basketball Fever and Lady Vol Basketball Fever as well. Uh, this podcast come out everywhere you get podcasts and also here on the YouTube channel. So again, give this video a like and uh, read the description, if all any links there, and leave a comment down below. Well, Tennessee is going back on the road after beating Kentucky in a, a nice resounding win at home. On Tuesday night, Tennessee heading back out on the road to Arkansas, Fayetteville, Arkansas, to take on the Razorbacks. This game, I can't say it enough, is huge. In fact, it might be potentially bigger than the Kentucky game, or maybe more important. It's it's right on there. They're they're basically on par for importance and and for just kind of the magnitude of the game and how important it is for Tennessee. Right now, the Vols are tied with Kentucky for the second spot in the SEC standings. After that win, they're both now 10-3 in SEC play, but Arkansas is right behind Tennessee at 9-4. So this game is a huge swing game for both teams. If Tennessee beats Arkansas, they really get a very firm, almost vice grip on that, at least the three spot of, of being not in the fourth spot and Arkansas being knocked down into the fourth. But if the Razorbacks get the win at home against Tennessee, they will leapfrog the Vols and push them into fourth, and Arkansas will go into third. And then it will come down to the regular season finale between the two teams of, of who can you know maybe leapfrog the other one. And it may still do that. Whoever wins this game uh, still has to face the other one in a couple weeks in the regular season finale. So this isn't the only time these two teams play, but this is a really important game for Tennessee because uh, this would be their best road victory by far of the year if they're able to get it. Speaking of which, uh, Tennessee has really struggled in Bud Walton Arena and in Fayetteville. Uh, they've lost six straight games on the road against the Razorbacks. Tennessee's last win in Fayetteville, some of you may remember it, in 2009, 13 years ago. So Tennessee has not won in six straight trips to the Bud Walton Arena there uh, in Fayetteville. And the last win came in 13 years ago. Uh, that is crazy to think about. This season, Arkansas is 14-1 at home. With the only loss, weirdly enough, uh, coming against Vanderbilt, a 75-74 close one. So still, it was a loss, but they're 14-1 to at home this year. At home, Arkansas is forcing a whopping 18 turnovers a game against SEC foes. And the Vols, by the way, are averaging just over 13.5 turnovers a game on the road in true road games this season. So uh, that's a little thing to keep an eye on. Arkansas has been doing a really good job of forcing turnovers at home and Tennessee is a little more turnover prone on the road than they are at home this season themselves. Uh, the Vols haven't beaten a, a ranked opponent in back-to-back -back games since February, 2007. Tennessee just beat number four, Kentucky. Now they're playing number 23, Arkansas. It's been, been 15 years since Tennessee has been able to beat ranked opponents in back-to-back -back games. Uh, the last time they did that was against number 23, Vandy and number 20, Kentucky, both of those at home in 2007. Tennessee hasn't had many chances, you know, to do that in the regular season. A lot of times because in the last few years, you know, SEC has been, I would say, not the greatest. And when Tennessee has had a lot of, uh, you know, early season kind of neutral site games and early season tournaments, uh, they've not always faced two ranked opponents in both of those. But when they have, they've usually split them or sometimes they've lost both of them. Uh, but since to that 2007 streak where Tennessee beat Vandy, Kentucky, that were both ranked, the Vols have only had nine other instances of back-to-back -back ranked opponents on their regular season schedule. Uh, and actually two of those nine have come this season for Tennessee and UT has split both of those instances each time. So Tennessee looking, this is their third time they've faced a ranked opponent in back-to-back -back games. Tennessee looking to go two and zero this time rather than one of one like they have the previous few times. But let's get to Arkansas here and kind of break down the Razorbacks and look at what they are doing coming into this game. Since they lost their first 
three SEC games this year. They started 0-3 in SEC play. and They were 10-5, and I think, at one point overall uh, on the season. They have gone on a tear. They won nine straight games, including, of course, uh, went over then number one uh, Auburn, uh, won nine straight games before going on the road and losing it to Bama by one. But they've won 10 of their last 11 overall. So they're 10 and one their last 11 games. They had a nine game winning streak all after starting 0 and 3 in SEC play. Tennessee fans can relate. Tennessee started 2 and 3 in SEC play. They've now won eight straight SEC games, or uh, yeah, eight straight SEC games. And they've only lost one of their last, I think one of their last 10 or something like that as well. So with that loss coming to Texas. So both these teams didn't have ideal starts in SEC play, but both of them have bounced back big time. Over their last 11 games, where Arkansas is 10 and 11, they're only allowing 62.3 points per game while scoring an average of 75.4. Again, all those have been against SEC opponents and then that one against uh, the Big 12 team in West Virginia in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Of course, that win streak, as I just said, uh, included the epic home win and overtime over the number one Auburn, 80 to 76. Uh, that was, you know, Bud Walton at its finest in that game. If you guys watched that game, uh, that arena was loud and rowdy. I expect it to be very similar to that on Saturday when Tennessee plays Arkansas uh, and Bud Walton there. It is worth noting, though, Howard, that aside from Auburn and, and Alabama, Arkansas hasn't really exactly played the top of the SEC lately. Per Ken Palm, Arkansas's conference streak of the schedule is dead last in the SEC. They're 14th in their SEC uh, streak of the schedule. Uh, the Razorbacks have played Missouri twice, Texas A&M twice, Mississippi State twice, at Georgia, Vanderbilt, South Carolina, and Ole Miss, which are all teams currently ranked in the bottom half of the SEC. They have faced LSU, Auburn, and Alabama, and, and they have wins over Auburn Al and, and LSU, excuse me. Uh, so that's definitely a big plus in their favor. Uh, so I mean, it's not like, you know, I'm trying to discredit them totally because they do have some good quality wins. And uh, I guess, again, especially against uh, Auburn, who was then number one and is now, I think, number two. But their upcoming slate of games, uh, tough. They had to play Tennessee twice. They play Florida, Kentucky, and then they had to play LSU again. So their toughest stretch is now. Uh, starting with that Auburn game, uh, the end of their schedule has been a lot tougher than the really the kind of the start of their SEC slate for them. You're, you're looking kind of as a further breakdown. The average Ken Palm ranking of Arkansas's first seven SEC opponents was 96.7. But two of their last three opponents have been in the top 20, Auburn and Alabama. And the average of their next five opponents on Kim Palm, their Kim Palm ranking, is 18.2. Much different than their first seven opponents. So, again, their schedule got a lot tougher. Um, and it, it's they're going to be really tested here as they're going down the stretch in the end of February and into March. According to Ken Palm, the Razorbacks currently have the number one defensive efficiency in SEC play this season. They're 18 overall, but in SEC play, they are number one. And it's not even close, actually. They have a defensive efficiency of 90.5, which means that they're allowing uh, 90.5 points per 100 possessions. The next closest is LSU at 94.9. So that is a huge difference. That's basically, what, a quick math here, like a four and a half point difference per 100 possessions. So Arkansas with easily the number one defensive efficiency in SEC play. Arkansas ranks second in conference play in E field goal percentage defense, third in turnover percentage at 23.1, which is crazy. So almost uh, a fourth of the time the opponents have the ball it results in turnover when Arkansas is on defense. Fourth in steal percentage, and they're second in both two-point and three-point percentage defense. They have given up the fewest made three-pointers per game in conference play so far, as their SEC opponents are only averaging just 6.2 made threes per game. So only really six made threes per game that Arkansas has allowed to SEC opponents. That's a, a very, very low number. They're also allowing just 66.1 points per game to SEC opponents this year, which is the number one scoring defense in SEC play. So just basically just a little over 66 points per game to SEC opponents, the top scoring defense in league play. They're forcing almost 17 turnovers a game against SEC teams, and that's been spearheaded by J.D. Note's 2.3 steals a game in league play. But more on J.D. Note here in just a moment. Razorbacks have forced at least 16 turnovers in seven of their last 11 games, and their opponents are averaging 16.8 turnovers in those last 11 games. Compare that to Arkansas's first 15 games of the season, they were only forcing 14.1 turnovers a game. So that's over, that's very close to a, a three turnover per game difference 
over the last 11 games compared to their first 15. Against SEC opponents at home, Arkansas is forcing an average of 16.8 turnovers, excuse me, 16.6 turnovers per game, excuse me, including forcing 19 on their upset win over Auburn. The Vols this season have only had 16 or more turnovers in just four games in the entire year. So Tennessee's done a very good job all season of not really having a huge amount of turnovers. And only one of those was on a true road game, and that was against Kentucky. Tennessee is 2-2 two and two in games this year where they have 16 or more turnovers. So again, they're not, you know, they haven't done it often, but it's ten, it's tended to be very sloppy games and, and losses for Tennessee when they have had 16 or more turnovers. Moving over to Arkansas's offense here, uh, they're not the greatest offense, but they will, they can still score. And again, we've seen it put up, you know, upwards of the you know, low to mid seventies, which is definitely enough to win games with their defense that they have too, but they're right behind Tennessee and SEC play on uh, Ken Palm. They rank sixth in the league play uh, in offensive efficiency while Tennessee ranks fifth. So, you know, Tennessee and Arkansas are right there next to each other in offensive efficiency in SEC play, according to Ken Palm. Razorbacks are only averaging 13.4 turnovers a game in SEC play on offense, and they have the third lowest turnover rate in league play at just 18.3%. So they don't turn the ball over a ton either, just like Tennessee doesn't. Arkansas also gets a lot of assists on made buckets, so they're a very good passing team and I would say a pretty unselfish team as well. But a lot of those really come on... uh, I would say a lot of those come on threes. They they have the, the fourth most in SEC play in terms of assists, but they also aren't really good in the paint and on, on mid-range games. Arkansas has the third worst two-point percent offense in terms of two-point field goal percentage uh, made this year at SEC play, but they have the sixth best three-point percentage uh, on offense. So the third, or excuse me, the second, yeah, third worst two-point offense, basically, and the sixth best three-point offense on SEC play, which is different than what they were in non-conference play. Non-conference play, they did a really good job of on mid-range and in the post. But in SEC play, it's been kind of reversed where they've had a little more luck shooting the three uh, than they did in non-conference play. Arkansas also runs a very fast tempo, running the third fastest in SEC play. And I think they're in the top 25 in the country when it comes to tempo. The only teams that run a faster tempo in SEC play this year have been Alabama and Auburn. That's not a surprise. Again, teams that give Tennessee trouble. I imagine Arkansas is going to give Tennessee plenty of trouble as well. Thanks to that style of play and, and also some savvy veterans, Arkansas has also been really adept at getting to the free throw line this season and drawing fouls. In conference play, they're drawing the second most fouls of any SEC team at 20.2 per game. They attempt a, a whopping 22.1 free throw attempts per game against league opponents, which is the fourth highest average in conference play. And they make 73.5% of those free throws, which is the fifth best in a conference play. So they get to line a lot, and they are actually pretty good at shooting free throws as well. In fact, for the entire year, 21.7% of the Razorbacks' points have come from made free throws, which ranks 23rd in the entire country. So only 22 other teams in the country have a, a more a higher percentage of their made points coming from free throws this season. So... That's a pretty gnarly stat and something that really Tennessee needs to be very careful, much like with Vanderbilt. You know, Tennessee can't allow themselves to get a lot of fouls. Arkansas is better than Vanderbilt, although Vandy did beat them, which is weird. Um, but this is a, a, a more talented version of Vandy, and Tennessee cannot afford to send Arkansas to the line a ton. Uh, both J.D. Note and Jalen Williams average over five free throw attempts per game in SEC play for Arkansas. And... Uh, I do East Tony averages, I don't, totally butcher his name. I'm so really sorry. Uh, he's averaging uh, nearly four free throw attempts per game in SEC play. To kind of look at the breakdown of that, when Arkansas is at home, in SEC home games and their game against West Virginia, which also was at home, Arkansas has been averaging 28.6 free throw attempts a game, while their opponents are averaging just 20.1. So they're averaging eight and a half more free throw attempts per game at home this year against their SEC opponents and West Virginia that's a, a you know that's a big difference, a big discrepancy uh, for them and the, their opponents. There, they have outshot their SEC opponents from the free throw line at home in all but one game this year, and that game was against Mississippi State, and both teams still shot twenty two, so they were tied. But every other game they've they've played at home this year against SEC teams, they have outshot their opponent from the free throw line. So Tennessee is going to have to be very careful again about fouling in this game, and, and don't want to commit to me dumb, stupid fouls in this one. Arkansas has drawn an average of 22 and a half fouls from their opponents in SEC play at home. So they get a home whistle. Everyone wants to talk about the rupperies up in Lexington. 
need to talk maybe some of the, the Bud Waltoneries, or I don't know, that sounded weird. But some of the uh, the butteries, there we go. That also sounds strange, but I'm going to go with it uh, because it seems like Arkansas gets some pretty good home cooking uh, for the whistle there by the refs while they're in Bud Walton Arena. All right, I, I've already mentioned him a few times, so let's go ahead and get into it. J.D. Note, obviously the big name to watch for Arkansas in this game. He's averaging almost 20 points per game in SEC play, putting up 19.8 points per game, along with four and a half rebounds, four assists, and 2.3 steals while shooting 33.7% from three and 72.7% from the free throw line. The six foot one point guard is the main engine of the Razorbacks offense and their defense. Because again, averaging almost two and a half steals per game as well. So he is a guy that, I mean, he's going to get his points. It's rare for him not to get his points. JD Note is a really good player. He's going to be an all SEC performer by the end of the year. Uh, He's been a high quality player for Arkansas, and again, one of the best just overall scorers in the SEC this season. Sharp shooting three-point sniper Stanley uh, Amudi provides support on the perimeter with uh, J.D. Note, making 43.3% of his 63s he's attempted so far in SEC play, and he's knocking down 53.2% of his twos as well against conference opponents, which is leading to 14.2 points per game in SEC play, and he's also chipping in for good measure, 4.6 boards and 1.2 steals a game as well in conference play. So again, uh, he's another one to kind of keep an eye on. But they really, Arkansas has a trio of guys that Tennessee really needs to watch out for on offense. And the third of those is Jalen Williams. He rounds out the big trio of scores for Arkansas. The 6'10 post player is typically the only true post player on the floor at any given time for Arkansas. He's averaging nearly a double-double on the year in SEC play at 13.2 points and 9.8 boards. He also dishes out about 2.3 assists, almost two and a half assists, and has a block and a half per game in SEC play as well. Like Tennessee, Arkansas tends to play a more small ball lineup with a stretch three playing at the four. So you can see a lot of basically a, a one post, four out type situation like what Tennessee does. Uh, you have Stanley Moody and then Adis Tony. Again, I'm definitely butchering their names and Trey Wade all measuring in at around six, six or six, seven, and all pretty much play the four uh, with uh, Kamani Johnson will play the four. And sometimes an underman five uh, again, Jalen Williams at six ten, pretty much always plays the five there. And then you have usually a six, six or six, seven guy playing at that four spot. So just like Tennessee who has, you know, Urosh or Fulkerson or Adu out there a lot of times at the five and you'll see Josiah at the four, Tennessee has been playing a little more against Kentucky, especially you had Adu at the five and then Fulkerson at the four. But late in games, when Tennessee needs some scoring, usually you'll see Fulke, Josiah, and then Vescovy, and then Ziegler, and then Chandler all out there at the same time. And, and Tennessee likes to have, you know, Vescovy, Chandler, and Ziegler all out there at the same time. Despite Arkansas not being an overly big team, they actually rank really high in, in rebounding. They're third in SEC play in rebounding with rebounds per game at 38.2, which includes the third most defensive rebounds in a game in SEC play at 26.6. So uh, they're actually a very good rebounding team because they have length. They don't have, you know, maybe the height you expect, but they have pretty good length. So kind of kind of wrapping it up here, looking at some other the stats to kind of really get a, a feel of this game. Arkansas has been superb in SEC play on defense and, and for the whole year, basically, but they haven't really faced that many top tier offenses. This Saturday is going to mark the fifth time, just the fifth time this year, that Arkansas has faced an offense in the top 30 on Ken Palm, and they're 2-2 two and two in those games. They've played 12 games this season versus teams in the top 100 on Ken Palm in terms of the offensive efficiency, and they're 6-6 six and six in those games. So 2-2 two and two against top 30 and 6-6 six and six against top 100. So again, uh, they haven't played as many, but uh, it's worth noting that all six of Arkansas's losses this year have come against top 100 offenses on Ken Palm. So uh, they have struggled I would say pretty decently with teams that are, are, are ranked highly on offense this year, even though their defense is good. Uh, it seems like, you know, the, the top tier opponents or the more top tier opponents have given them more issues this season. Uh, conversely, this will be the eighth time this year that Tennessee has faced a Kim Palm defense of 20 or better. And the 19th time that UT has faced a top 100 defense. So Tennessee facing defenses like this, it, it's no different thing. The Vols have done that all year. Uh, the Vols are 3-4 and four against the top 20 defenses they have faced, according to the Kim Palm defensive metrics, and 12-6 and six against the top 100 defenses. When it comes to facing elite defenses, to, to stay on that kind of track there, Arkansas has actually found a pretty good deal of success uh, because their defense has been able to match the opposing defenses uh, quite often. 
Arkansas is 2-0 against top 10 Kim Palm defenses, which is what Tennessee is, and they're 5-2 and against teams in the top 55 uh, on Kim Palm defensive efficiency. On the flip side, the Vols have had a lot of success this season against teams ranked right around where Arkansas is on offense. They're a top 70, kind of in that, that 61, I guess 66 range, excuse me, on Ken Palm as of the recording of this video. And Tennessee is 5-0 and this year against teams ranked between 50 and 100 on the Ken Palm offensive efficiency rating. So again, Arkansas 66, Tennessee is 5-0 and against teams between 50 and 100 on that metric scale. Five of UT's six losses this year have come against teams currently ranked 42nd or better in offensive efficiency, with a lone loss outside of that being to LSU, and LSU ranks 118th. So Tennessee has had a lot more success against teams in that range of Arkansas uh, on offense than they have you know, the more lead offenses. But again, they're playing at Bud Walton in a, a game that's going to be a crazy environment, a place where Arkansas has not lost hardly at all this year. To really, for truly round out this time, I'm going to look at a couple of Tennessee players here. They've also had a pair of freshman guards who've been just outstanding for UT during their recent run of success. Over Tennessee's last nine games, Kennedy Chandler and Sakai Ziegler have been phenomenal, and they've been a big reason why the Vols have had the success they have. Over the last nine games, Chandler is averaging 12.8 points, 4.8 assists, 2.4 steals, and 3.3 rebounds, while Ziegler is averaging 12.4 points, 2.7 assists, 2.4 steals and 2.3 rebounds while making 47.4% of his threes and almost 90% of his free throws. In fact, Chandler and Ziegler mentioned them both averaging almost two and a half steals, two of the most proficient pickpockets in the SEC and in the entire country this season. Per Ken Palm, both uh, Kenny Chandler and Sakai Ziegler rank in the top 25 players among all qualifying Division I players in the country in steal percentage with Ziegler ranking third at 5.2% and Chandler ranking 25th at 4.5%. So they're both in the top 25 and Ziegler is one of the top five most effective stealers in the entire country this year. Not just an SEC play, but the entire country. So he is a an elite pickpocket in, SEC play, in the SEC and, and just in all college basketball. And finally, it looks like the real John Fulgerson has finally started to show up. Over his last two games, uh, against Kentucky, or excuse me, against Vandy, he had 12 points, six boards, three assists, two blocks, and a steal. And against Kentucky this past week on Tuesday, 14 points, eight boards, one block, and one steal. Uh, counting the South Carolina game where Olivia Kamwa went down with injury, Ferguson's averaging nine and a half points, four and four point eight rebounds, and one assist while shooting 60.9% from the floor and 90.9% from the free throw line. Again, that's all in his last four games, which have all been wins for UT. In his previous 19 games before the, these last four, Folky was averaging just 7.5 points, 4.9 boards, and 1.6 assists, while making 53.5% and 72.3% of his free throws. But that was even worse when you look at the fact that after the Arizona game, when he got COVID and had to miss, I think he missed one game and, and then came back, but he was definitely not himself. There was nine games between when he came back from COVID and then when Olivia Campbell went out. In those nine games, he only averaged 4.8 points, 3.1 rebounds, and shot only 45.5% from the floor and 68.4% from the free throw line in those nine games since returning from COVID up until the South Carolina game when Olivia Campbell went out. So he's been much better over the last four games and really good the last two games. So let's see what he can do against Jalen Williams and against uh, the length that uh, Arkansas likes to deploy at that four spot as well. But that'll do it here for this Vol Basketball Matchup Breakdown video. Thank you all again so much. Please, like I said at the top of the, the video here, please leave comments down below. Let, you, let us know your predictions, your thoughts on this game. We'd love to hear it. Subscribe to this while you're here. Go subscribe to our podcast as well. We really appreciate all the support. Can't thank you all enough for the support you've shown us so far. I'm Nathaniel Rutherford. Thank you all for watching. And this has been another Vault Basketball Matchup Breakdown video.